Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Married at First Sight season 13 reunion special part one was on fire. Let's establish a timeline here. The weddings for this season were towards the end of February 2021. Decision day was mid-April and this reunion special was shot four months later at the end of August. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mirla and Gil. Mirla, Mirla, Mirla. It's always the quiet ones you have to look out for and check your back for bullet holes. Miss Mirla played Gil, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. What she did was stone cold. She made that man jump through hoops to get close to her, accepted his praise, romantic gestures, sat back and allowed him to initiate their conversations and make him ask most of the questions, even let him sell all of his possessions to move in with her, all while she sat back, did practically nothing, and pretended she wanted to be with him. Damn! Obviously, Mirla never should have agreed to get married at first sight. Let me say that again. This woman never should have been on this show. I believe Mirla when she says she was never into Gil, but she's a self-proclaimed introvert who happens to be extremely selfish. So introverts do not like attention. If she came out on day one and said she was not attracted to Gil and wanted nothing to do with him, all eyes would have been on Mirla. Experts would have made her talk about her feelings and pressured her to get to know Gil better. That is a selfish introvert's worst nightmare. They do not want the spotlight on them. Mirla's goal here was to keep the peace and fly below the radar. Again, if she did not want the spotlight on her, she never should have gone on a national television show. Ryan wasn't into Brett, so he chose to back off. Mirla wasn't into Gil, but she chose to play along until the cameras went away after decision day. Now, why did she kiss him? She said she could go the entire season without kissing him, remember? I believe she gave into the pressure. Rather than to continue to be put on blast for not kissing him, it was easier to just kiss him and take back control of the narrative. She was playing these folks like a fiddle. Why have sex with him? Remember prior to kissing him, they both admitted that she would have to be the one to initiate the kiss because her shooting him down was eventually gonna turn him off. That meant Gil was coming on to her trying to get that kiss. After he got the kiss, night after night after night of snuggling up in the same bed with her, does anyone believe he never got excited and never tried to have sex with her? Mm. As they reminded us, Mirla is a very sexual person. She finally gave in. After all, she's not a virgin. Saying yes on decision day. It's easier for her to break up with him after decision day when the cameras were gone. She cared more about her image and her feelings and what was best for her and wasn't considering poor Gil over there thinking he found the one. Notice that she didn't admit to getting rid of any of her things. So what if she gave up her apartment for a nicer one? Because we know she's not gonna agree to a lesser one, right? So when she offered to move out, she knew that Gil would be the one to move because he wouldn't wanna pay for a place that wasn't his taste and I'm sure much more expensive than his previous apartment. Of course he's gonna be the one to take his blender, dog, and clothes and go. Just a little side thought regarding them moving in together. I wish they would have shared their timeline. Early in the season, Gil mentioned that his lease was up in three weeks and didn't want to renew it if they were going to live together. I wonder if they got that place during the season. Now, as for Gil, I believe that Gil really wanted to be married. I believe that he wanted to be married so badly that he ignored his own deal breakers along with some red flags. But before I go any further, some of you hashtag Team Gil folks are like gangster when it comes to him and feel no negative word should ever be spoken about Gil. I dare somebody say something bad about Miss Jenkins. Don't nobody better say nothing bad about Miss Jenkins because I'll go crazy. That, that's when I'll lose it. Meanwhile, many of you couldn't stand Mirla and the way she treated him throughout the season. How is it that you could see that she wasn't right for him, but he couldn't? Gil missed some signs right there. That's where I'm trying to meet you in this discussion. Gil made mistakes. Kevin and the other husbands commended him for putting in so much hard work into the relationship. Kevin equated it to climbing Mount Rushmore. But did Gil ever stop to think why building this relationship with her was so hard? 
and if she was even worth the effort? I've said in previous videos that I don't see what Mirla brings to the table other than money and baking cookies. I wasn't getting much personality from her, nor was I getting a I've got your back vibe from her either. Gil says he's in therapy now. I believe as he reflects on this horrible situation, he'll see the red flags and social cues from Mirla that he missed. While I don't agree with the way he handled Mirla's negativity with negativity, I don't believe he deserved this. Leading him on all season and dumping him after he sold all his stuff to be with her was wicked. So that's my take on the Mirla and Gil story. I'm interested to hear how you interpret it. And about that making $100 every two weeks comment, that was such a horrible edit. I understood it to mean he was talking about the difference in his pension versus her retirement. Cause you can go online at any time to see how much your pension or retirement will pay based on your current contributions. He wasn't talking about their salaries cause not only did Mirla make more than him during the season, but she got a huge promotion to partner also. I know some of you want to believe so badly that he makes more than her, but what the experts Gil and Mirla said during the season is true. She makes more money. He was barely a year into being a fireman. I know they can work overtime, but he was taping a TV show about 50 to 70 hours a week. According to a government website, Mirla's salary four years ago in 2018 was 10,000 more than the high end of the average fireman's salary in Houston today. Anyway, believe what you want. Brad and Ryan. While Brett sat there all slouched over, I was like, this show is one sneeze away from getting an R rating. That's all I'm gonna say about that. For me, the best part of their segment is when Ryan's sister Alexa accused Brett of having a relationship during the season and Kevin started questioning her. By the way, if you follow my channel, you had a heads up on this accusation. Brett is a horrible liar. Brett, is it true that you met someone who may have distracted you during the season? No. Well, did you meet someone? Well, yeah, but I didn't pursue it until all this was like said and done, like this situation was over. Oh, okay, so you weren't in contact. Well, I mean, we text here and there during the season, but we were just friends. Hmm, well, people seem to think you were more than that. Well, there's facts and then there's rumors. Okay, but the night you met him, people saw that it was a little physical. Well, yeah, okay. Girl, you went from, no, I didn't meet anybody, to practically, yeah, I met a guy, made out with him on the dance floor, gave him my number, and we hooked up a couple of times. Jeez, she made Ryan's little app download look like a choir boy. There's not much to say about this couple that hasn't already been said. They were way too different, not each other's type, and an overall bad match. During the husband segment, Ryan made a comment about Mirla enjoying single Rachel. Someone posted a comment about that on social media and Ryan replied, my only comment to that is if Mirla truly thought that Jose and Rachel were what was best for the two of them, I wouldn't have made that comment. Mirla is getting a lot of negative this week, but she is genuinely a good person to her people. I'm not included in those people currently, but yeah, let up on her a little. I'm not included in those people currently. <laughs> In his effort to defend Mirla, he kind of made her look like a jerk. Zach and Michaela. These two never seem to disappoint when it comes to drama. And it didn't help that the way the show handled them being separated was like a Jerry Springer set. Michaela on the couch in her red Chiquita banana dress while Zach was in a dull gray dressing room with a reaction camera in his face. The more these two talk, the more they are suspect. I think they are both telling half truths and the real truth is somewhere in the middle. First of all, I'm not a body language specialist by any means, but Zach's body language was screaming at me because it looked hella fake. If you remember how he responds to Michaela when she's saying something that is upsetting or a lie, he's very pensive, quiet, rubs his forehead and smoldering. So all these theatrics he's given not only look fake, but I noticed he went in and out of it. Like when she was telling stories where he agreed with her recollection, we got normal Zach. But when she was saying things that he was gonna lie about, he started yelling at the Jerry Springer cam. Michaela talked about different scenarios where they had sex. I've said it before, I don't believe Zach when he said they only had sex once. 
which was during the honeymoon. Throughout the season, he put a lot of weight on them sleeping in the same bed. I don't believe it was just a cuddle. But I think it's interesting that he is so hardcore denying her allegations of having sex. It really makes me think that he may have told people like his family and his girlfriend Bao that he and Michaela only had sex the one time and he only had to fess up to that instance because they admitted it on camera. So when Michaela busts him out, I feel like he's trying to protect his relationship with Bao. And of course, after his people watch the season, it makes him look bad for continuing to have sex with someone he's telling them is crazy, right? So anyway, when Michaela said that shortly after decision day, they semi lived together for seven to eight days. If you watch my decision day video, I read a post from Zach where he said they originally agreed to say no on decision day and work on the marriage afterwards but Michaela changed her mind during the taping. I tend to believe that because during her post decision day interview, Michaela said regarding Zach's idea of starting over, that's stupid to me and I'm not doing that. Yet, there she was a couple of days later, posted up at his place playing house. And now when Zach came out, what in the blabberhood was that? Kevin asked him about the retreat. Zach said he felt like everyone blamed him because he abandoned her. Michaela was sitting in the Jerry Springer camp shaking her head like, no. No, you didn't abandon me. Girl, we all remember the meeting with Dr. Pepper where you sat on the couch looking like you were given a deposition blaming Zach for abandoning you that night. I said, Zach, please don't go. But he left me. He left me in such an explosive way. Girl, stop it. Now, I can't even interpret the exchange between Zach and Kevin when Kevin was asking him about decision day. All of a sudden, he wanted to play dumb about his brilliant idea to say no, but still work on the marriage. Kevin says something like, you did say I want to work on this relationship. Like, maybe there's a chance. And Zach's like, but did I really say that? Like, that's what I said? Well, yeah, you told Michaela you thought you should rebuild your relationship. And Zach's there like, uh, Kevin, I, I, I have a relationship with everyone in this building. Like, uh, what, what, like, what's your point? Don't make it seem like I'm the bad guy here. Like, like what, what, what are we missing? Like, where's the disconnect here? When Michaela stormed the stage, they were giving us full on Jerry Springer. Like, tell me in my face, you don't think you're the father of my baby, little Shaquan Psoriasis. These two have a lot of growing up to do. I'm exhausted talking about them. Moving on to Rachel and Jose. Now, you guys know I got no love for this couple. Jose still sitting there Joseing. Did you notice how uncomfortable he was when Kevin brought up the night Rachel called him Johnny? I don't believe his apology is sincere, nor does he think he was wrong for yelling at her or locking her out. I did what I did and I said what I said, but y'all seem to think I was wrong, so mm, sorry. But Kevin gave Rachel a huge pass. He did not question her about going to her ex-boyfriend's house that night. Dust off that ex-boyfriend and bring him on stage. Bring him on, bring him on. Ask him where Rachel slept that night. When was the last time they had sex? If he still has feelings for Rachel. That's the tea I wanna hear. Who cares if Jose thinks Rachel has too many pencils? Now a small spoiler alert here. Rumor has it that Jose and Rachel officially broke up at the end of October and they're not even on speaking terms. 